Welcome to the Early Childhood Education, a constructivist approach for 21st century thinkers. My name is Carrie Snyder, and I'm very excited to be sharing this course with you. Constructivist education is not only one of my passions, but it is a, an approach to learning that is centuries old, which is interesting for the case that we're making today in the need for 21st century teaching in order to develop classrooms that are thinking classrooms um, that engage children actively in learning processes in order to help them be prepared for a future world. In this content talk, I'm going to provide a conceptual overview of the course, highlight some of the course assignments and activities that you will be doing, and then I'll discuss a little bit about how the online course modules be, will be laid out week by week. I want to introduce myself before I introduce the class. Um, again, I said my name is Dr. Carrie Snyder. I completed my PhD at the University of Missouri in Kansas City, where I studied early childhood education across curriculum, leadership, and policy foundations. My dissertation is actually on culturally responsive teaching self-efficacy, where I explored how teachers' self-efficacy for teaching culturally responsive teaching impacted children's achievement scores in reading and math assessments. I'm also very interested in approaches such as the project approach and other culturally and developmentally appropriate teaching styles to meet not only the individual needs of of learners, which as an early childhood teacher myself, I've always been dedicated to developmentally appropriate practice as outlined by our National Association for Young Children and all of the great articles and studies and textbooks that you're probably familiar with in your undergrad and that you're getting more familiar with in our master's program. Um, one of the things that I wanted to share with you is that this is, I am going into my 25th year in teaching. I began my career as a classroom teacher. Um, I am a double major, so I had two degrees, one in early childhood education, birth through third grade, and one in elementary education, first grade through eighth grade. I always thought I was going to be a kindergarten teacher, always wanted to be a kindergarten teacher, but was offered a position in an elementary setting prior to graduation. So what do you do when you're offered that job? You take it. So I taught fifth grade my first year of teaching. I also taught second grade over, the sum, over two summer schools prior to moving into kindergarten. That was back when the state of Missouri had half day programs and had a huge explosion for early childhood teachers in the state because we moved from half day programs to full day programs. When my oldest son was born on the first day of school, my fifth year of teaching, um, which is not how teachers are having babies, right? The first day of school, we're not usually having a baby then. Um, that year, after that year, I was able to move into a pre-K position where I taught part-time two days a week and then taught full-time three days a week. And my son at the time was able to go to um, the child care center that was attached with the pre-k center now I interestingly I have to share with you that when I was in school for my undergrad I never saw myself as a pre-k teacher I never looked below kindergarten in all actuality but what became a necessity for me in my life as a mother actually has become my passion and I've been able to have experiences across all grade levels due to my administrative background I was an Early Childhood Education Center Associate Director, and I was the Assistant Principal of a pre-K through eighth grade school. I actually started the Early Childhood Program there and was able to also then interact um, very intensely in the middle school program. From there, I entered into higher education where I've served in a variety of roles, such as teacher educator, researcher, I've been a coach of teachers, of principals, um, in many different capacities. Primarily, I coach on the project approach and culturally responsive teaching and cultural competence and integrated early childhood practices. 
Um, I'm a consultant uh, independently through my work with the project approach and other educational um, strengths. I'm a board member on state level boards. I serve as on an advisory board for our current Stronger Together Missouri uh, Preschool Development Block, which is a federal grant that the state of Missouri has received, um, which has provided over $40 million for our state and our early childhood systems. I do a lot of work on these volunteer boards to advocate for children and families, to advocate for best practices, um, to guide and lead educational experiences for for um, all sorts of early childhood stakeholders across our state. And I am also an author and editor. I have authored several different um, articles and book chapters and other books, but what I'm really excited about is that um, my very first editing publication just came out this Christmas, and it's entitled Growing Child Intellect, The Manifesto for Engaged Learning in the Early Years. This is actually the third book in the series of books um, written by Judy Harris Helm. Judy Harris Helm's textbooks, first two textbooks that lead up to this book, are the two books that you'll be using in this class. And so with this course, we are going to be thinking of the underpinning, those fundamental theoretical and research aspects of constructivism that help us conceptualize 21st teaching, 21st century teaching and learning. We have to always think about the standards and curriculum and instructional practices and how we continue to have professional development and what kind of learning environments are necessary. One of the most important aspects as an early childhood teacher is to remember the natural ways, the natural approaches that children have for learning are full of these four thinking skills. In fact, these are instincts that Dewey first predicted and wrote about over 100 years ago, and that is the child's um, social instinct, the need to collaborate, the chi and the child's need to express their ideas through communication, the child's need, the art instinct to be creative, um, and the child's instinct to solve problems and to use critical thinking. So these features of 21st century teaching and learning are actually the processes of the project approach. And what's nice about the project approach is it gives you a structure and it outlines a specific processes in order for all of this to come together in the classroom. And so as we continue to think about student-centered teaching and learning, when you read in the green text, which is Young Investigators, you're going to read about a curriculum continuum. And there are different ways that we have to teach in the classroom. We are teaching math. We are teaching reading at certain grade levels, first, second, third grade in particular. There are specific skills that need to be taught in order for children to progress through those particular disciplines. However, we also know that children have to have time, especially in the early years, to develop um, executive function skills and that teaching and learning should follow what we know about brain development and that ultimately, aside from facts and aside from memorizing basic facts and focusing on isolated skills, we need to be focused on thinking and how to get children to be actively engaged in their learning experiences so that they are thinking. You will hear me at from time to time say things about not doing worksheets. You'll hear me really help to parcel out differences between cute, crafty type activities, coloring sheet, cra art crafts types of activities, and really moved to activities that are based on children's processing and representing their ideas, representing their thinking. So these are some of the things that we will not only read about, write about, talk about, think about, these will also be opportunities for you to create student-centered learning opportunities um, through following the project approach. Speaking of that, as I mentioned earlier, Judy has written um, multiple books, 
But um, the best-selling book is Young Investigators, The Project Approach in the Early Years. It's really like a manual for teachers to understand what is that structure of the project approach. It helps us understand how do you get started, what do you do throughout each of the three phases. There are three phases to the project approach. You're in the second phase the longest amount of time. In reality, in this course, we will spend most of our time um, in, in phase one helping you to discern how do I pick a project topic that is going to be a meaningful topic, um, one that is connected and deeply rooted to children's background, but also their interests, but also one that you have plenty of real live resources about because the project work is all about the real world. It's all about investigating and learning in real, um, through real methods and with real people. So frequently you will get to learn how to assess your school area, your school community. What resources do you have right there in order to determine the best project topics? Then we'll move and we'll test out some of the processes that happen in phase two. Some of you might go above and beyond and actually do a little bit more in that area and then do something that's culminating for phase three. We'll also be reading Becoming Young Thinkers. This is the advanced book that goes with young investigators, but for teachers who've had a lot of experience with um, inquiry-based teaching already, because the project method is an inquiry based approach. So inquiry based means it's based around children's inquiry and simply put it's based around children's questions. So it's not just about picking a topic and planning really great active engaging learning experiences. It's about connecting those experiences to help children investigate their own questions related to a topic that's worth spending time about because projects are usually long-term investigations. Most teachers who do project work do two projects a year, one each, each semester. If you have older children, uh, one of my colleagues at a school in Kansas City, all of her teachers do project work there. Depending upon the age, sometimes the projects are longer. Um, we, I've seen uh, third and fourth grade class, class, classes that actually spend an even longer amount of time um, on their project work and then vice versa. Sometimes I've seen them move through projects a little bit faster. The key is it's all about answering children's questions. So in this um, course, I want you to think about how the green book is really going to give you the instructional skills um, for planning and for implementation. And then the Becoming Young Thinkers book, it's really our uh, scholarly background understanding. It really helps us to understand mind-brain education. So how does neuroscience um, influence early childhood education? And how does the project approach show and demonstrate what neuroscience says we need to be doing? You will see so many reflections in um, 21st century teaching and learning documentation with Becoming Young Thinkers. In addition to these two main textbooks, I have selected some other readings that are constructivist readings. I really wanted to expose you to as many scholars as I could without um, without giving you too much to read. Um, but those scholars are important. Someone like Rita DeVries, Constance Camille, these are individuals who helped to shape um, really what we know from Piaget and Vygotsky and Bruner and other um, theorists, early theorists. So what these scholars of constructivism like Lillian Katz and Judy Harris-Helm, they've helped us see constructivism as a practical practice, teaching practice. Some of the assignments that you're going to be doing, these really, this represents kind of the overarching ideas. You have reflection journals, you have three of those. Those are going to be over those additional readings that I mentioned. Um, those readings will help you think about um, different themes in constructivism. One is about, for, for example, one's about constructivism approaches. One is about specific um, integration of curriculum with uh, constructivism. Another one is constructivist practices to really understand children. So how we observe and interact and really help children, um, really help us understand children. 
Assessment of children's interests is one of the first things that you're going to be doing. This is where you're going to practice webbing. So making concept maps is an important um, note-taking skill in general, but making concept maps or concept webs is an important um, process that takes place in the project approach. Specifically, we create webs of what children know about project topics, and we create a teacher anticipatory planning web. You're going to learn about this, and you're going to get to practice that out. Those types of experiences will help you conduct the assessment of children's interest. In that main assignment, you will create some child data tables. Many, um, those of you working in a classroom, you already have a lot of this information, so you'll just be compiling it and synthesizing it and really looking at it from the frame of what do I know with from a strengths-based perspective about these children and how can I use this to assess what they're really interested in learning and what they're interested in? Can I find that as something that could be a curriculum topic? Um, project approach curriculum planning, you're going to learn about project approach processes. As I just mentioned, the teacher anticipatory planning web. Um, you'll look at how would you make a curriculum map for the project approach activities. You will create three activities. Um, three activity plans. Activity, activity theory influences making activity plans. Those of you who know Vygotsky, love Vygotsky's work, um, he really believed in activity, so active, engaged learning as the modality that young children learn and develop in. So we take that concept and apply it to the activity plan. You'll get to plan three of those and implement them. And this is where as a classroom teacher, I want you to make a decision for what works for you. I have had some teachers who do this. They have their own classroom and they're taking this course. They implement these with all of their children. You may do that. And in fact, I encourage you to do that. Um, but for the first assignment, assessment of children's interests, I, it is not an expectation that you would do a web with every child. You certainly could. It could take place during a center time throughout the week. It can take place during informal conversations. I've been known to sit down in classrooms at lunchtime, at independent time, all sorts of time, and do child webs with, with children. Um, but for these assignments, you can just focus in on a small group of children, two to four groups of children and that just really helps so that when you're writing and especially when you're doing the assessments you're not assessing on everyone so I want you to I mean in practice you would be doing that anyways but for the purposes of this course I'm trying to give you a little bit of a break in that regard if that makes sense the final for this course will then be documentation that really should say documentation of teaching and learning where you will be able to create three different types of documentation for three different audiences. One of the audiences will be children, which is pedagogical documentation. One of the audiences will be your colleagues and administrators, and then one will be parents. So we'll look forward to that towards the end um, of the course. To help you navigate the course, um, the way that Blackboard is set up, you have a course home, then you have, and of course now you're seeing my view, so I should have put it on student view for you, but this is what the course home page looks like. Each time you go, I would like you to know that when I put an announcement that would normally post to your course home page, I always choose an email. Um, with it. So when I post an announcement, the email will go to your UCMO email. So please use your UCM email um, frequently for this course. Most often you're only going to use two tabs, the week by week tab and the assignments tab. Let's go to the week by week tab. Here you can see them a little bit more. So the week by week tab, when you click on it, this is what you will see. You'll see a short directions just to remind you of the instructions for completing weekly online content modules. So each week by week folder, each week folder has everything in it that you will need to complete the work for that course. The syllabus and course calendar can be found in two places. One can be found here. The other exact same identical folder is in the assignments folder. Then you'll click on week one, introduction to the course. Let me show you what that looks like. 
When you click on that folder, you're going to see a list like this. Each week there will be a list. It starts with directions, and in those directions there's normally other links. So sometimes you don't even have to go click the links below. The links might be right in there. Um, usually I'll tell you first, do this. You know, sometimes you might say, oh, I'm just going to jump to the course content, um, the content talk and listen to a video first. Most of the time, the reading is the foundation, and then the video is going to either help you think about something that you read about, or it's going to help you um, experience the, the course session topic in a different way. Um, if there's a discussion board built in, like you can see on here, for week one, I just want you to test out a different type of video application to introduce yourself through a little bit of a video, and then you'll upload that to discussion board. Even though discussions is a tab on the left-hand side of the main menu, anytime there's a discussion board that I've included in a module, which is just part of the module activity. They're not graded. They're just a way for us to have some collaboration and communication since this is an online course. Um, those little discussion boards will be embedded. Something else that I embed in each week, let's say it's a week where you have a particular assignment to submit, then I will click and create a link to the assignments tab uh, for that assignment that's, that's due. For your course calendar and for your, I'm going to go back, let's see. All right, let me move here first. So this is the assignment tab. Each of the assessments you can see um, are listed in its own folder, and then there, of course, is the syllabus and the course calendar again. If there are any changes in due dates, then the course calendar will be the place to look for those. For everything that you need for all of the assignments, if you click on this folder, you will find everything that you need in each one of these folders. Some of these, the first two assignments, have um, different components, like the assessment of children's interest. It has three components. There, two of them are very easy. It's just creating webs with children, but you use those webs as raw data of children's interests. So when you get there, you'll see where you have multiple things to submit. Each week, I will start introducing these assessments, these assignments, with an assignment content talk. So please don't think that today is the only time you're going to hear about these assignments. Um, as we go on in the semester, I will um, help with that. Before I talk about instructor contact information, I want to talk to you about the first assignment of this week, and that is really where you're going to read an article about uh, writing, scholarly writing, and how you use critical thinking in your scholarly writing. One thing that I know can be challenging as a new master's student or a master's student period is just continuing to build your own writing capacity so that by the time you lead up to your capstone, pro capstone project, you've had multiple experiences and courses to really develop as a scholar. Um, graduate students, we want them to be able to have that capacity. And so the first actual activity is to read through an article to help you develop an understanding of that. And then there's a short, um, there's three different activities you can choose from. So it's your choice. And then we'll just share those via discussion board. My goal for that assignment this first week is to really help you get a mindset of how you will write the reflective journals and then how you will be able to write um, in all of your other coursework as we move as you move forward in the in the program. So that is um, about the course. If you need to contact me, please email me. It is the easiest way to do it. Um, sometimes if I real if I'm really busy, um, you might get a very brief, short response from me. Um, sometimes um, 
I, it may take me a little bit of time, just depending on whether I'm traveling in the car or whether I'm teaching, but I usually get back to students fairly, very, very, very soon. If I get an email in the evening, sometimes my evenings get filled up, and so it may just be the next morning before you hear from me. Um, if you ever have an emergency, something that you really need to get a hold of me for, my cell phone is available to you. Um, also, one thing that I'll be doing as we get started in the semester is I will be surveying each of you to see if there's an evening time that throughout the semester we might contact each other and have a group Zoom meeting. It wouldn't be for a full three-hour course like if we had a face-to-face -face course um, together but it would be um, there's at least two times in the semester that I think it would really benefit us to be able to talk together particularly as you're learning some new um, planning processes I'm really excited about this course if you ever need me if you have a concern or if you're really excited about something don't hesitate to contact me Looking forward to working with you all and diving in to constructivism.